in this study, we actually focus on uh, studying different web technologies that are now available on many different retail sites. So if you go on sites like Macy's, uh, Victoria's Secret, or even on Amazon, you see technologies where consumers are able to uh, do different things. So some of these technologies are uh, just search recommendation systems. Some are really uh, more like what, how you can zoom, uh, you can see different sort of pictures. So broadly speaking, you see two types of technologies navigational technologies and product oriented technologies. Now navigational technologies, they're actually uh, geared toward primarily taking a consumer to a particular product. So like search, uh, if you search a product, then it will directly take you to a product uh, or, uh, or it will give you a list of products and then you can pick from that list. Uh, on the other hand, like if you think about recommendation system, it also basically gives you a list of products, uh, probably based on your prior history or some browsing pattern and then it takes you then you click on the product takes you to that product so these navigational technologies are primarily geared towards sort of driving more sales the other type of, te type of technologies that we focus on uh, is product oriented technologies once you're on a product page so if you are on macy's website or um, on or some other retail website uh, what you do is when you go on the site you can see different technologies like uh, alternative photo so basically what it does is like there are a bunch of pictures available uh, so a model probably wearing the product and you see the product from different angles so you see the model from different angles and you get a better sense of this product uh, zooming basically you're zooming further and further to see finer details so the idea behind this technology is to make sure that you have less uncertainty about the product uh, then you have color swatch so you can see different colors uh, if they're available uh, and the product changes in those colors so uh, the goal of this technology the product uh, product oriented technologies primarily they're geared toward actually reducing returns so because you know the retailers don't want you to buy them and then return them so the, the goal is to reduce uncertainty so that you actually uh, do not return them after you get the product so what we did in this research is actually we worked with a medium to large size women's clothing retailer and we looked at we looked at how these different technologies are impacting sales so in case of navigational technologies, we actually focus on how they impact sales, what type of products are sold more. Uh, and in terms of the product oriented technologies, we not only look at sales, but we also look at, is it really reducing return? So let me first talk about uh, the results of navigational technology. What happens when consumers are using navigational technologies? What we find is, in terms of navigational technologies, we look at two types, search and recommendation systems. Uh, in terms of search, search is more effective if consumers already have some knowledge about the products. This could be through promotional materials like ad, catalog, some, some places where you have seen these products. So what happens is you just look for a particular product and the search technology takes you that product. And we find that when people use the search technology, uh, the sales for such products that are promoted and the consumers have some knowledge about, it goes up. Now, on the other hand, uh, if the people don't have a lot of knowledge about products and they're just doing some generic search, then uh, they may just be lost in sea of possibilities because they get a lot of list of products. So like they just do a generic search on like pants or shirts they get a lot of options and they may not be uh, they may not really know what to buy so it doesn't really have a lot of impact on sales now interestingly when it comes to recommendation systems what we find is it improves sales for both products that consumer know about and about the ones uh, that consumer have no knowledge about so what happens here is what we're seeing is recommendation system if you think about Amazon what they do is they show you only a few products related to whatever you're looking at the moment. Similarly, most retail website, what they do is they show you a limited set of products, five, six products related to whatever you're looking at the moment or based on your previous history or purchase history or browsing pattern and is guiding you in terms of finding products. 
Now, in this guiding process, there might be some knowledge about some of the products. You may know some of the products, but there could be products that you don't know about and you just go through this product so you find possibilities, but you're not swimming in a sea of possibilities. It's a guided search process. Uh, and therefore, we see the result, uh, the sales of both of these type of products go up. Interestingly, what we find is that the sales for products that you don't know about, consumers don't know about, that that goes up more than the sales for products that consumer already have some knowledge about. And not only we actually looked into the impact of recommendation system, uh, to the best of our knowledge, we're the first one to actually quantify the impact of recommendation system on sales on a retail website. So for the particular retailer that we work with, for this clothing retailer, women's clothing retailer we worked with, what we find is that the use of recommendation system increases sales by more than 5.5%. So that's quite significant. Muhammad has already talked about navigation technologies. Let me talk about the other type of technology he mentioned, but he didn't go into the details of, and that's product-oriented technologies. Once you get to a product page, perhaps through the navigation technologies, you use the product-oriented technologies to learn more about the product. There are typically three types of this technology. One is zoom, where you see the product on a larger scale or focus on a particular part of the project, product to see the details. Another is color swatch, where you see the product in different colors. And third is alternative photos, where you see the product from different sides or from different angles. Now, like the product-oriented, um, like the navigational technologies, the product-oriented technologies also have different effects. They are not all the same. For this type of technologies, we typically see the effect on returns. That means product returns after one purchases the product rather than sales. Because although these technologies influence sales, they influence returns quite significantly, which is not influenced by the navigation technologies. We see that Zoom reduces returns, which is good. Color swatch doesn't have a noticeable effect. Interestingly, alternative photos increase returns, which is certainly not good. But somebody might say that alternative photos increase returns, but it might increase sales so much that net sales, which is sales minus returns, would go up. So why do we bother? So we look into net sales also, and we see that even net sales would go down with the use of alternative photos which is certainly detrimental to retailers. Let's see why this is so. First, of, first and foremost, why do people return? Before purchasing a product, consumers often form an expectation of the product, which we call pre-purchase expectation. After they purchase the product, they have experience with the product, and they will form a post-purchase experience. If the post-purchase experience doesn't match up with the pre-purchase expectation, then the consumer will be disappointed and he or she would like to return, at least would be tempted to return. Pre-purchase expectation can be influenced by the type of information that the consumers came. In this context, there are broadly two types of information, factual information and impression-based information. Factual information refers to concrete facts and impression-based impression -based information would relate to an impression that one might gain or form by looking at a product. In our context of women's clothing, which Mohammed already referred to. Factual information could be how the buttons are sewed, how the stitches are made, what type of fabric it is. Whereas impression-based information could be how someone would look like 
wearing that product. Now, factual information would fall uh, would for more realistic pre-purchase expectation. Whereas, impression-based inf information may generate an inflated pre-purchase expectation. So with factual information, pre-purchase expectation would not be far off from post-purchase experience in most cases. On the other hand, with impression-based information, the pre-purchase expectation could be far away from post-purchase experience and so people would, there's a giving rise to the possibility that there will be a gap between the pre-purchase expectation and post-purchase experience. People would be disappointed with the product after getting the product and they would be tempted to return. In the context of um, women's clothing, Zoom would give us factual information. It would focus on a particular part of the project. Uh, product will show show us the how the buttons are sewed, how the stitches are made, and what type of fabric it is, and so on. On the other hand, alter, um, alternative photos would probably give us more impression-based information because it would often show a beautiful model wearing the product quite often in a scenic environment. So a consumer might look at that and might think that he or she would also look like that and would generate often an inflated impression. So it's not unrealistic that in our context Zoom reduces returns where alternate photos would increase returns. I should tell you, however, that that may not be true with other types of product categories. Look at laptop, for example. If you look at a laptop from different angles, you actually get factual information because you see different slots which could be hooked up with different devices. So this is more factual information rather than impression-based information. So in other contexts, alternative photos could also reduce returns just like Zoom. By the way, as I mentioned before, color swatch doesn't affect returns that much because all you see is the color, the product, you see the product anyway with that color, but you see the product on a larger scale with the color swatch. So you don't get it much information anyway, either factual or impression based. Now it appears that some re re retailers have started to realize that certain product categories are such that alternative photos would actually create more impression based information. And that could actually increase returns. So to guard against that, some of these retailers have started to allow consumers to upload their own photos or own videos about the product. In that case, other consumers could look at those videos and those photos in addition to the retailer updated photos and videos. So those videos would typically be more realistic. So that way, the pre-purchase expectation could be more realistic even with alternative photos, even for product categories where pre-purchase expectation could creep in anytime. Interestingly, some of those user-generated videos and photos also could give you ideas about how to correct some flaws in the product. And Muhammad would now talk about one such interesting experience that he witnessed recently. So basically, you know, uh, I have we have uh, nine months old now. So we're trying to buy a playpen, uh, and we're trying to buy it from. Uh, we're looking at different options, and I looked at different retailers, and uh, and you know looked at pictures on different retail sites from different angles. It looked really nice, so we were kind of interested in buying the product. But when you looked at some of the reviews on Amazon, 
um, there are some concerns that people are having. And we also were kind of concerned about some things. It was looking great, but you know, we had some concerns. So when I started to look at the pictures uploaded by consumers, other consumers, where their kids are playing around this playpen, actually give us a lot more ideas about this particular product and how it works for six months old, eight months old, and nine months old, and older. And not only that, uh, the thing was that there were some concerns about, you know, this product doesn't allow really kids to stand up. So some consumers figured out a way to buy some handle uh, for, you know, a bathtub handle from your regular, uh, I guess, Home Depot or Lowe's, and then actually put it on this playpen so that the kids can actually hold on to one of those handles and stand up. So, you know, this really helped us uh, getting not only a good idea of this product, but also realizing how to sort of overcome some of the limitations. So, you know, in summary, our study is really showing that the retailers, you know, almost all retailers are now online. You have to be just online and especially with the revolution with all the smartphones, people are just always looking, shopping online. Uh, you shouldn't just, retailers shouldn't just invest blindly in technologies. It's important to understand what these technologies are going to deliver. Uh, when retailers actually invest a lot of money in these different technologies like product oriented technologies, it costs a lot of money because you're doing models, you're doing uh, different scenarios, scenarios and things like that. Uh, it's key to understand that it's not always just going to give you positive return. It's important to understand that you, under, you need to realize how it's going to work out for the consumers. So, and then basically invest in them.